But for Jerome, look, I see Jerome as a backup singer. He's not a ma he's not a main playmaker. We have him unlocked. Mate, We've got you your ring inside, and we're going to lock that. <laughs> Zach, doing. Okay, my man. Here we are. And confidence comes and confidence goes. Where it goes, no one knows. And how oh, you get oh. it back, no one knows. Oh, too good, you. Jets, we're back. You ready to rock? Ready to go. I'm oh. always ready to rock. Here we go. Oh! Jets flicked and he's flicked up. Get an ambulance. <laughs> get an ambulance. <laughs> Boom. Right up his stomach. Straight off his melon. Oh, I can't believe he did that. <laughs> With a long range shot, the arms up. It's a point. He was one of the great guys. Oh, oh. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Freddie and the eight. Zach Bailey stepping in for the great Matt Thompson. Uh, last week he was at a Hall of Fame lunch. This week he swapped the footy field for a swimming pool, calling all the action from the World Championships over in Japan, doing a great job. All the coverage, of course is live on nine. Luckily, these two gentlemen are here alongside me. Did you just me, say though. the great Matt Thompson? The great. The great. He would he love great. that. He would love He's, that. He is one of the greats. Did you watch the 400 swim, Ariana Tidmouth? Yep. That World record time. Talk Should've about Talk about pressure. A lot of people doubted whether she could come back and do it. And then so you got this young Canadian who broke the world record. She's like 16 or 17. She's literally about to turn seven. She's going to be the gun. Mm. But Around a Titmus, and then there's the American bird, Ledecky. Look, yeah. What a swim. That was unbelievable. Well done. She so loves the show too. Freddie, you're clearly getting around the swimming. I watch a bit of the swimming. I like the swimming. I like listening to Matt. Anytime Matt's talking, I'm listening. Okay. I'm um, the opposite. But you love your surfing. and that, Okay, so firstly, you must be over the moon at the moment. The night's getting the job done mm. over the storm. Swell. And the swell is pumping yep. in Sydney at the moment. Very we good. call it frothing, frothing in the surfing yeah. world. Yeah, ants in the pants. If you head out to Bronte, yeah. you'll see Joey out there for hours and hours. Hours and hours. Every morning. All right, one thing we've uh, loved about July is the Try July post try celebrations. The NRLW got oh. on board. Ready, this is <laughs> going to be the best of the lot, the limbo. Look at that. That's good. That was amazing. The old uh, Raiders. Yeah, the yeah. Raiders. Was it Clint Chikoski or Morgan? Justin, Justin Morgan. Morgan. This was stiff. Now, where did he learn these, Freddie? Yeah, it was stiff a, as a that was stiff uh, state of origin. That was stiff as a no, he, He's like he didn't do an injury. Now, what was the Brian Toto one where he, he was like... He got, Blades uh, of he, Glory. Uh, he got a heart one. thing. What's that one? Is that wrestling? Uh, yeah, John Cena. Oh, Joey. And she's getting shacked. <laughs> this, is the, <laughs> this is the old uh, Dance Force special. The wheel, wheel them in. Okay, have you tried horrible. that? Have I, have I tried that? What, try, oh, yeah, oh, mate. I, I have that's going to work trying to... I've tried it. Oh, I got that. Big <laughs> oh, yeah. And here, here's the classic. So, obviously, Reid Marnie wasn't happy against the Bronx last week. And we've had our own Millie Boyle try and do it on the weekend against the Bronx. And guess what's happened? Spoil sport. Yeah. By one of her Australian teammates in Chelsea, Leonard Doom. That makes it even more funner. Yeah, it's better. That was a good game, actually, the Roosters and uh, the Broncos. And then the Sharkies mimicked Millie Boyle with their own teammate. So good. It is great, isn't it? It is good. Like, I mean, the Are they training these girls? This looks like Well, the best thing about it... The choreography is outstanding. They're better than the blokes, aren't yeah. they? Well, $5,000 for each, Every, each one. goes to That's either Nathan Stapleton or mm. Daniel Anderson. Mm, They're up to uh, $270,000. They've finished this week. So this is last week. So last year they raised two seventy-five. dollars We're already at two seventy. dollars They're on track for four hundred. dollars Wow. Which is, which is, I mean, 200 grand for both of those gentlemen who, mm. whose lives have been turned up down would be phenomenal results. And I think a million dollars in the last four or five years. I think, Daniel, did they raise about 600 at the do uh, at Randwick races? Don't know for sure, but there were a lot of VIPs there. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Great. Fantastic. Now, Freddie, Yo. I wasn't here last week, but I was watching on. And yep. you spoke about how many careers had been started on the footy show. Footy show and the Let Sunday footy show Let me borrow a ring off too. you now. Wow. <laughs> that bloke. <laughs> Say goodbye. <laughs> my man, he swallows I have things and unlocks here a lock inside himself. and a key. Yes? He's Put the lock in my mouth. Oh. <laughs> Put in the key. <laughs> now, I have the key going in the lock. We're just unlocking them now. We'll have them unlocked. Mate, We've got your ring inside, and we're going to lock that. <laughs> <laughs> Zach, <Zachary>. okay, my <laughs> man. Here we are. <laughs> <laughs> See that in there? 
Light stuff, he does all sorts of things. I suppose the light bulbs. Yeah, it's full of. Do you want the key? I've got to get the key out. <laughs> oh, wow. That is your key. Put that in there and unlock it. Nice one. Thank you very much for that. Thank you. Wow. Have you still got that ring, Freddie? No. No. It wasn't a wedding ring either. <laughs> no. You got it back. No rings. Joey, what's your party trick? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Freddie, Freddy, what's Joey's party <laughs> trick? Dancing on the ceiling, upside down. How's that one? I haven't been partying much lately. Of course you haven't. <laughs> All oh, right. Yes. We've had some fun already, but it's time for yesterday's hero. Boys, see if you can guess who is... Joey's the master at this. Last tackle Ooh. for the Roosters. A fumble. It's still play on. Wonderful fingertips. The kick cross. over the top from Cross. They'll score in the corner. <laughs> Gets it Brett for Mullins. the Roosters. Yeah, Brett Mullins. Brett Mullins. Miraculous play there. He's got that. It's not. It's not. It's Brent Mullins. Oh, well, wait up. Is it Rob Miles? No. No, 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 no. Later than that. Not famous for playing for the Roosters. Don't he had like a knocked knee. Yeah, yeah, skinny. More famous for playing for the Parramatta Eels. Oh, it's Guru. Oh. Sangers. Eric Growth Jr. In the centres. He's got it. He had a funny gait, didn't he, Eric? What a weapon he was. Oh, yes. Love footy. <laughs> oh, if only he'd concentrate. He'd, he'd you know he's coaching his, his girlfriend plays out at Camden. I think he lives out at Camden. He's mm. coaching the team. Is he? Yeah. What a good fella. He call, used to call himself a frustrated muso who <laughs> plays rugby league. <laughs> Tough life. Yeah. He was a good player. And a cracking bloke. Great fella. We've Him got, and his dad. Yeah. Eric Senior, what a great man he is. All right, we've got plenty coming your way in terms of the footy. Latrell Mitchell's back. There's a lot of talk about where Jerome Luai might end up uh, with news this week. He's split from his manager, but we're all going to kick things off with the ongoing war, I guess you could call it that, between the RLPA and the NRL. There's talk uh. now that the players could boycott the Dalian medal. Now, Billy Slater, he doesn't get fired up about too much, but here's his take on the current situation between the RLPA and the NRL. Seriously? Grow up, like seriously. Like, but the, 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 both parties need to grow up and 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 just work this out. Like, f like the media not talking to the players. Like, this is getting ridiculous now. Seriously, like honestly, can can we just can we just grow up and just work this out? Like, I, I don't understand. Like, to watch a game of footy and not hear from the players after the game, it. I, I don't understand how we can't sit down and and work something out. Billy Slater, like I've never seen him before in terms of an off-field issue, mm. I, I would say. Like he, he's always pretty measured. He was measured there, but to tell both parties to grow up. Now, the last time we saw Dallium medal boycott was back in 03. Um, when, Craig Gower. When Craig Gower was essentially... I think Craig Gower is now... Of the medal. Did they give him the medal? I don't know. No, Big they, still, they still haven't. Oh, haven't they? No. Great sacrifice. Should he be given it? I think he should be, yeah, for sure. Yeah, but then that was part of the reason of standing up. Mm. Well, they're trying to do something. I don't know who's in the right ear, and I'm a bit with Billy that it just seems ridiculous that they can't sit down in a room and get it sorted. Like, I, I find it ridiculous as well, but the whole reason is to sacrifice it. So if they want to do it again, then whoever's sort of sitting at the top of the moment, I wouldn't have a clue, then someone at the end of the day um, would get the player of the year according to the... Uh, the Dallium system, and it's one, of the great it's uns one of the great unselfish acts yeah. for his, his fellow players, Craig Gower, and he didn't hesitate. And after that, there was a deal done, wasn't there? It got sorted. Yeah, I think Gowie was on the... Well, we were on it. It was, all, it was yeah. made well before the end of the year. Yeah. So, you know, there was... It was a sort of a, a group decision by a lot of people and I don't know what came of it, but I'm pretty sure, yeah, there was something signed just after it, but mm. that's the sacrifice. And in negotiations, there's give and take. Let's mm. just get it sorted.
Do you have confidence that it will be done by this year's Dalian, which no. is the week no. of the grand final? No. The threat's a frightening thing. Seems like it'll never get done. And it's a fair sacrifice. You spoke about Gowie's sacrifice. Mm. But say Sean Johnson, there's a lot of talk mm. around him in the moment, or whether it's a Nathan Cleary, it's probably the only thing in the game he hasn't done. He's still young. Yeah. But it, like, Well, I'd say that the players have never been so... They've never had this solidarity before. It was great during the Craig Gower um, in the early 2000s, 2003. Yeah, it was great solidarity then, but I feel like there's more now. Do Absolutely. Remember, they're, you, they're more organised. They're, well, they've got more money. They're, they're functioning better. They've got more staff. In the old days, you had Butsy. Yeah. And then the leading players or whoever the group of leading players were. So, you know, at the moment, it's uh, a lot more organised. It's a lot it's better funded. There's a lot of talk at the moment about a lot of players not knowing actually what's going on. I yeah, guess because that's part of care, any mate. union, right? They don't care. So there's people on the board, like Daly Chairman's as the president. You've got Wade Graham, Chad Towns and Christian Welsh, all these players. But each, each club is a delegate. They do have delegates. So the delegate has to go back and give the information back to the fellow players. It would be getting been... tiring. It, it would be getting very tiring. And I, and I assume the NRL are, are sort of leaning on that. I don't, I don't know what the hang-up is and why they're not doing why they're not coming to an agreement. But I'm assuming the NRL are just relying on players in the, like they've always done and just said, you know what, just sign it. Just get it done. We're sick of it. Because that's the normal... That's the normal... Um, that's the way the players normally go. They just you know, want to see the end of it. But like Joey said... They seem more solid than ever. When you say it's tiring, is that on individual players or in terms of the oh, debate? Oh, of course it is. It's just something else you've got to talk about, something else you've got to worry about, something would, else you've got to think about. Will it affect any of those key players that are the delegates? Like, oh. final, like say, finals time, there's well, going to be all would. this talk if it's some not settled. Would. Waste some some would. Some would. Some thrive on that sort of stuff. Daly Cherry Evans, his form's been outstanding, so mm. it's hard to, you know... But he's a politician in waiting, isn't he? Mm. It looks like that. <laughs> A bit with Billy there. It's it's quite incredible that's not being done. Like, no. Hopefully both they're, parties. Hopefully both they're parties. sitting around at the moment having a cup of tea, sorting it out. And look, Clint Newton's been painted as the villain in this. He's just doing his job. Mm. And it's nothing about money. It's all about decision making, having a seat at the table. Like recently, there was talk there was going to be two more rounds next year. Talk to the players. The NFL has 17 rounds, isn't it? Mm. Yep. And then they play the Super Bowl. Rugby league's harder on the body. Last year, Junior Polo, Junior played 36 games in the front row. Trials, club games, state of origins, test matches, semi-finals. 36 games. Imagine how taxing that is. On, to get yourself up physically but mentally to play any NRL game, let alone origins or semi-finals or test matches, to get yourself up mentally to go out there and get smashed, it takes a lot. Mm. It takes a lot out of you. Imagine how taxing it is to tackle him. <laughs> oh, yes. But you're throwing eight weeks of preseason minimum on top of that. He's only got a few well, weeks mate, they're off not the machines. They're not, and you know what happens? Happened. You get those loads around your, your mid to late 20s, everything comes crashing down. Like, my body broke down for 18 mm. months, two years. Freddie was the same. And Origin Mum, we both sort of chatted to Nathan Cleary about his. I said, mate, you've been loading up your body and you do so much extra kicking and you do this. You know, you've got to start managing your body. Next thing, hamstring. He's mm. never had hamstring problems. Mm. It's all connected. All that, but well, you went through the calves. Yeah. You got blokes that went away. Jake Trebrojevic, Latrell, soft tissue injuries from overwork. Mm. So, an incident like that. They want to extend the, the season by two weeks. The players need to sign it. You spoke about in 03, after the Dally M's, mm. it all kind of got settled, I guess, mm. when there wasn't as much focus on the game. How does this end? When... When does it end in the off-season? No, I hope it can end in the next week or two. Like, for instance, State of Origin, I would have loved to have heard from Bradman, Bradman Best. Everyone in Newcastle and Hunter Valley would have loved to have heard from Bradman. But this is, uh, this is what the, the players are doing. And as I said, they're, they're solid. There's solidarity there. They just get it done. Get in a room, sort it out. Your egos aside. No. Surely you just go into a room and you don't leave until it's done. Surely. Just, why's it so hard? Get it done. Just do it. All right, voice of reason, Brad Fittler. Uh, we love our footy, of course. We love our swimming. Of course, being called by the great Matt Thompson. But we also love our cricket. The Ashes' fifth test in uh, the UK kicks off on Thursday night right here on Nine.
Buckets of rain. Yeah, it's a tough one to take. Buckets of tears. It's one of those that will be tough to look back on. Sorry, England, that's got to hurt. But there's more pain coming for you. Now, the series is on the line in London. Australia's on the edge of victory. Can we win our first series in England for 22 years? The Ashes' fifth test starts Thursday on 9 and 9 now. Yeah, cannot wait for that. I know Piers Morgan is a big fan of the show and he's been getting stuck into the Aussies, uh, given they've retained it. But Piers, uh, commiserations. The Aussies are bringing the urn back to Australia. All right, let's stay on track in NRL circles. There's a lot of talk about Jerome Luai at the moment. Will he remain with the Panthers or will he uh, leave the club, testing himself on the open market? He's split with his manager. Do you think he'll stay? Do you think he'll go? I think it comes down to um, the circumstances at Penrith from a point of view of money. How old is Jerome now? 26? I reckon he'd be 26. Young family, got three kids. Jerome. Yeah. So, well, it depends what the difference is between leaving and staying. In terms of money value? In well, terms of money value. And, like, because you look at everyone at Penrith. Like, everyone's gone there as a, as a kid, basically, most of them. And if they didn't go as a kid, they went as someone who was uh, rejected from their club or they picked them up fairly cheaply. And they've turned them all into, you know... Um, players that have got a high value. Mm. So you just churn players out. It'd be great for him to stay. Him and Nathan have been together since they were 16 years old. It'd be wonderful. But so once again, it comes... If you produce a local junior and they come through your system from the age of 14, there should be some dispensation. Mm. Because I think a lot of people in the Penrith um, area, somehow the tentacles of... Jerome Lua and Brian Tao and Stephen Crichton, and these guys, and they get a hard time in the media. You would not meet better, good-hearted blokes. Good-hearted blokes. You know, they're deeply religious and they do so much for the community. They've, they've been putting work into these young men since the time they're 14. There should be some dispensation. But for Jerome, look, I see Jerome as a backup singer. He's not a, ma he's not a main playmaker. So... I think Jerome's value, if I valued him, it'd be up around six, seven hundred thousand player. But if he went on the open market, he'd get a million dollars because there's limited halves in the game. So he's got to wait and make up the decision, Jerome. And look, over five years, that's you know one and a half million dollars, a lot of money. He's done on every stage. He's been good at Origin. He's but been, I'm he's, saying he's been involved. He's not in an organised. Yeah, he's not I know what you mean, half. The other person that can you know add that bit of flair. You know, if you've got an organising half, that's you know, if, in the today's market, he's easy eight hundred. Well, today's today's market, who's looking to buy Jerome? It's the teams outside the eight, mm. really. So he's got to make the decision. He sets himself up, you know, really comfortable after footy, or does he stay at Penrith and compete and win most weekends? So it's a big decision. Huge decision. I think you'll go. You'll think he'll go? I think he'll go. I think well, I think he's at that age where... He's won where competitions. Yeah, he's, he's probably at looking at his where... family. He, so, Jerome, Jerome's from humble uh, background. He grew up in... Is it Mount, Mount Druid? Yeah. Out that area. I think it all depends what the difference is. In terms of money? In terms of money. So so are we talking about 200 you're... grand a year? Difference? No, no, it'd be more than that. So it'd three... be up around 300 grand a year. Yeah, I think so. And then he's got to weigh that So up. he signs a five-year deal, as you said. It's one point... That's 1.5 1. 1. 5 5. million. That, that'll make you go. It's a lot of money. 700 after tax <laughs> and all your other stuff, so consider that, Jerome. Joe, you, do, you just mentioned that he's the second fiddle to Nathan yeah. and will be that yeah. out there. Now, both of you have led teams to premierships. As, as a chief playmaker, how much of that desire would be driving him? Well, he's won two comps. But, but as yeah. the chief, i.e., like, you know, JT won it off the bench yeah. when he was a youngster. Yeah, he yeah. always spoke about, I wanted to lead a team. You speak to DCE now, I want to lead a team to mm. a premiership. Early in the year, you might not appreciate it as much. You might well, we not be both did similar, going from a young person winning a the competition then to driving the bus. Um, but did that, did that drive you a lot in the back end of your career? Yeah, the fact is I lost a few in between, so it drives you. <laughs> but, yeah, once you get to be captain and start leading the team, yeah, it takes on a, yeah, a whole new look than when, you know, you're 18, 19... And it's and exhausting. ..supporting. It's exhausting when, because, mate, I was an absolute prick... I rode blokes that hard because, um, you know, I wanted the standards up here. Mm. And some people, it just is not everything to them. 
but you got to drive those guys, and I drove it every day, and bit, I was a prick. A bit like Michael Jordan at the Chicago Bulls. Well, apparently, by all accounts, he was a competitive yeah. monster. But that's what you got to do. You got to mm. drive it. You've got to. You've got to be driving the standards. I don't do as every much now. as that. It's not. Uh, it's not as common as it used to be. That where you had people who were like that who just drive you so hard. You drove yeah, Fitzy I, mad, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. But when I started, like Royce and all those bikes, they drove me mad. Yeah. You know, there were just certain things that you couldn't do, you, wouldn't let, you weren't allowed to get away with. And they were different to when I started when I was a captain, and they're majorly different mm. now, but they're nowhere near as hard on each other now as they used to be. Like, mm. skin was a bit thicker, I think, in the old days. We're known as snags these days, snags. sensitive new age guys. Well, you know what? Like, harsh reviewing each other is, that's where you get your ultimate strength. You know, I think Melbourne are renowned for that where you just sit down and say, well, you didn't do this, you didn't do this, and you can sit down and have a discussion about it and then get on with your job. If you can do that, that's where you get strength and trust and all the good stuff that wins your games. Joey, you mentioned that if he's going to go to a club, it's going to be a club out of the eight. Yep. Who, who, who's the perfect Tigers. Club? The Tigers is well, there. You've got, you got Appy there. You've got uh, a few other Penrith blokes there. Bulldogs has been talked about, but they've got Matt Burton there, whether they see Matt, Matt Burton as the centre. Matt Burton's not a halfback. Well, they play Jerome halfback. But then once again, they're both left field players, left field dominant players. The obvious one is, is the Tigers. Mm. And if he, went the to- if he went at the Tigers, he'd get a million dollars. For sure. For Matty sure. Do, and do a good job. They're talking about Aiden Caesar, which he's a lefty as well. Lefty. Um, I don't know which other halfbacks they've got on the radar there. Aiden Caesar was the name that was tossed up. But and they've got Fainu they signed last week. The Titans? Of course. Are the Titans looking for... He's a 5'8". He's young. And, and he's a 5'8". He's, he's, a, he's a bit like Jerome. Titans? Looking for a halfback? Because um, Kieran... Sexton. Kieran's there, but he's coming in. Oh, yeah. yeah. Anyway. Dragons. If, if, you're, if, if, if you're... I just need one word here. If you're the Panthers, Edwards or Luai on a long-term Edwards deal? Edwards or Luai? Edwards. If you can only keep one? Edwards. I'm not doing it. OK. All right, the Bunnies will be boosted by the return of their biggest name. Superstar fullback Latrell Mitchell returns after 12 weeks out with a calf injury that we thought would and hoped would only be one week at the start. Uh, how different does he make this South Sydney team? Huge. Mm. Huge. Gives everyone confidence around him. He, gives, uh, he opens up that left side with Cody, which then unlocks um, Alex Johnson. Um, everything. And then he gets around Damien Cook, he gets around um, Cam Murray. It's huge. Well, that's going to be the key. Those words you're saying, get around. If he gets around, they win. They just normally win. I think they make a big statement this week. I think they, they have a huge win. He's going to lift them so much. By all accounts, hearing from the outside in, he's just been driving the, the standards of training. He's up. Like an origin one. How... how Infectious is he mm. when he's when he's up and he's at him and just rubs off on everyone. He does this. He's doing stuff at training. It was this? Remember that four on four? Yeah. And he got the ball and went shimmy shimmy, and then went left foot inside. He's running here. Then all of a sudden he's there. And then Nathan came and he went dunk like that. <laughs> Nathan near done a backflip. I said Nathan, would you have got him? He went yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then he went down with a calf. Anyway. It, it, the world. Does Latrell unlock Cody? No, if you look, watch Cody. He's he's unlocked anyway. What he does, he just he just gives you more points. Um, you know, obviously saving points has been a problem lately, and it's just his you know knowledge around um, at fullback and getting the numbers right. That's going to be one of the most important parts. They rely on their defence so much, and you know, listening to Gus and their defence just hasn't been good. Um, they gave up heaps of points last week. He lifts everyone. Mm. He lifts the crowd. You imagine people during the week in and around Redfern and where they train. Everyone, all the supporters be up. Trails back this week. The players will be all hearing it. He just inspires people. So, so they're ninth, but with the Troll Mitchell, they got they a great run. They got a buy to go, and they got a good run. They got a good run. I looked at their draw. I think they'll win. Maybe every game. Yeah, their last two definitely... games, they got the Roosters and the Knights. I think. I'm pretty sure they play the Knights. But I had a really good look at it. I think the, well, you get the bye, so there's five games. I think they'll definitely win four from five, maybe even five from five. So f- for me, the top four, Penrith locked in, Brisbane locked in, 
and you're going to have Cowboys, Storm and Rabbits going for that other two positions. I'll tell if you, I'll if tell you got, on paper. They got Tigers, Sharks, Dragons, Knights, Roosters. Tigers, Sharks, Dragons. That's a big and there's back a four. No, there's got a buy in between. You're right. They could win every game. Yep. Except against Newcastle. Well, if the Roosters hit a run, they were good last week, the Roosters. Mm. They got a huge game this week. If they could beat Brisbane, their run isn't that awful either. They play Parramatta and South, who are both in front of them. So if they win them as well, their last couple of weeks are going to be so good. Mm. Footy's been great. So yeah. good. Well, one team that's going the other way at the moment are the Cronulla Sharks. Looking at the ladder, <coughs> uh, are they in danger of just mm. slipping right out real The fast? next two weeks is going to show us what's under the bonnet. They've, they've lost confidence. And confidence comes and confidence goes. Where it goes, no one knows. And how you get it back, no one knows. Oh, too good, you. The, so good. Um, well, they're down on confidence. Their left side has just been totally changed. Connor Tracy at centre. Uh, Trindle at 5'8". Talakai's back this week. Uh, and then they had Calhoun in the back row. Teague Wilton's been a big out for them. They've lost Dale Finucane for the Dale season. Dale Finucane's gone mm. for the season. I, I think the next two weeks is going to be really They need Hamlin Ueli. He's a big loss. They stormed home last year to finish second. They lost one of their last six, but they played like the Dragons, Manly, the Bulldogs, teams that weren't in contention. Well, this is, this, this is year you look at that run, I don't they're already struggling going into the back end. Hamlin Ueli's not playing. Uh, Talakai's back. He's a bit crook last week. I was talking to Fitzy, so... Not only he sort of pushed him to the bench, but he didn't play because he'd been crook. So he'll be back, and I'm assuming he might even start. Um, but they've got Penrith South, the Titans, Cowboys, Knights, Raiders. That's a tough run. Pretty much every team there is above them. That's a tough them. run. Uh, Fitzy, look, you, you, you've played alongside him. Uh, you've both, you both have. You, you had him in origin camp as your right-hand man for a yeah. while. He, he's so... Well, he's known for his defensive systems. So do we know where that's going wrong? He's, a, he's a defensive savant. <laughs> this one here, that, that, that was a worrying one. When there was more defenders and attackers, Josh Alloyer went through. Connor Tracy went across Mate, two. You know why, Bart? Like, he wanted to do the right thing and he thought he was, but he just played out of his box, you know? Like, it's when you want to impress people. And... This is the thing. With structure, you need one person to go rogue and break out of structure. It all falls to bits. Yeah, he just he just wanted side. to do the right thing and just lost his head. And then they but, lost confidence from that tackle. But looking at tries, every try we've shown is down the left hand side. Yeah, for another. they did a good job, Manly. When they broke mm. them early, Cherry Evans are too smart. Mm. He just kept going there, going there, going there, and they're just coming up with air. So Talakai will be back this week. I didn't I, see who the back row was. I think semi final. The back rower. Their semi-finals and Newcastle semi-finals will come down. Is it round 26? They play the Knights away. I think that game defies both clubs' um, season, whether they make the eight or not. So they got uh, so Wade Graham, Wade Graham, Wade Graham's in. Mm. He'll play on the left side. He's that? been uh, battling a busted toe, playing on a broken toe for the last month. I reckon. They're painful. Broken toe. All right, I'm sure uh, you've heard, or you've all heard of uh, Joey's apprentice, Jessie Southwell. Well, she's had some fun with her sister, Hannah. Do you think she sees that as a compliment? Yeah, of course. So. Right, all right. Continue. Sorry. On, the well, Sorry. on the field. On the field. The Southwell sisters have had some fun with our Wide World Sports team. I'm Jessie Southwell. I'm Hannah Southwell. And we play for the Newcastle Knights. <laughs> I'll probably go four wheat weeks. Well, anything. She's a garbage bin. We call her a garbage bin. Just let me run through my three meals. There's like a bit of egg left. Jessie. <laughs> <laughs> That's sometimes the best bit. Yeah. So I'll go four wheat weeks plus sugar, and then I'll go two, four eggs on two pieces of toast with bacon, and then after that I'll do two pieces of raisin toast. That's all one meal. I get infections a lot. So I, had, I got like, <laughs> like skin infections. And I got like a, a scratch when I was playing sevens, and it turned into a staph infection, and she I was in pain. didn't really go into depth. It was like a proper, like other ass cheek <laughs> on her hip. It was a hematoma. I had never seen anything oh. like it. And then, because you have... And Jessie like, turns and goes, is it all right? <laughs> and I just add to not. One on my, my back, back. One on my booty. And then one on my head. <laughs> <laughs> just one of the, I, just, I just split a hair. And it was honestly coming through like a horn. A horn of, like, pus. Jazz. Yeah, jazz. Yeah. Obviously not me. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Why can't you do it? <laughs> You're beautiful. <laughs> Infection City over here. They seem like they are a lot of <laughs> fun. She goes, what can you do? You're beautiful. <laughs> Isn't it great to see another set of siblings in Knight's colours, of course, the Gidleys. The Gidleys. The Gidleys are... The Kamalis. The Kamalis. The Safidis. Are we missing one, Freddie? The Johns. Gidleys. The Johns. Who else? Are there any other brothers? I'm sure there has been. Any yeah, on the right. spot. We've got to move on. Uh, the Bulldogs. Uh, the clean out. I don't know if I'm uh, the brave. McDougals. The McDougals. The McDougals. Yeah. McDougals. I don't know if I'm brave to say that. I hope uh, Gus Gould, their GM, isn't uh, close by. But a, a host of their players, Kyle Flanagan, Luke Thompson, uh, Ryan Sutton, among others, have been told that they mm. can go. Do you have to let players go in a bid to land a big The force? thing I've been hearing about um, the Bulldogs uh, publicly and on the quiet is the standards at training. The Bulldogs were renowned in the uh, late 90, mid 90s late 90s, early 2000s as a club that flogged their players mm. and to the point of breaking them. And if they did break you, you weren't a bulldog. And that was under Billy Johnson and uh, Car Gary Carr. Car Tony Grimaldi was at the end. Tony the, Grimaldi. But it was Billy Johnson. Mate, they'd flog them. And if you weren't up to it, you weren't a bulldog. They've got to get back to that. So whether these players aren't up to that DNA, but... They got to get those standards back in the Bulldogs. They got to get that Bulldogs DNA. So if you're not if you're not happy with the training, you just bring in someone that is. A, a problem now is some players are too well educated on sports science, and you know they they talk about loading and how much they've done, and they need the, this and that. Gone are the days where. I you remember did what you were told. You did what you were told. And did, did that come from the coach or did it come from a senior player? Because you spoke Both. before, you said you were Get out uh, on not the field pleasant to be try. around. I remember one. So Ronnie Palmer, actually the players come to me and said, mate, we're getting flogged. We're, we're breaking down. Roosters used to get flogged yeah, Roosters, early 2000. We used to train hard. So this is, ju this is just before, because remember David Barnhill, he was one of the players that came to me. So anyway, they said, mate, we're breaking. And I rang Ronnie Palmer and I said, oh, Ron, uh, look, mate, players have just spoken to me. Uh, you know, this is the way they're feeling. You know, it's up to you. You do what you do. So anyway, I'm sitting on the lounge and I get this phone call. Who the f do you think you f are? Ricky. <laughs> Gus. Gus. <laughs> when you want to coach, you f f f f for about five-minute tirade. I Don't never shoot the messenger. I never said a word and <laughs> just hung up. We're not going to rest. I remember reading a story of Kelvin Giles, he the great conditioner, me. who was a conditioner at Canberra when they, when they were in that early, late 80s, early 90s. Then he went to Brisbane when they went 92, 93. Yeah. And he said, he used to, f he said, this was the era before professionalism where a lot of the players were working manual labour, the labourers or, you know, garbos. So they get them in the morning, they'd flog them in the gym or flog them on the field, they'd go to work, they'd come back at night and they'd flog them again. No complaining. Mm. Nowadays, a little, some of the players are too well educated and they use that as an excuse. I was really surprised when I went, went to Clubland and they fill out a bit of form. And it's like, how'd you sleep last night? But how much hydration you had? How's your well-being? Dang, how's the body feel? They fill it. And there's a number. Da come there's up, daily forms. Yep. Yeah, they come at with a number. Club. And if it doesn't meet the number, they don't train or they send them home. Mate, I would never have trained. <laughs> How much sleep are you, you got? sober? <laughs> are you sober? Are you sober? <laughs> Freddie, do you think you, you spoke about Gus then giving you a spray? Do you think Gus is could you do that? Still now? have that these days, or you can't? Could do you it? do that? Well, you could do it. Certain if players. a player went out of line, and you know, certain coaches, you've got to be able to do it. The coach is in charge. If you let the players in charge, you're in all sorts. Mm. So would Gus be doing that, or Cam Serrato? I, I think Cam Serrato. Cam Serrato think... be sitting with Gus, and they'd be communicating like they're. You know, they're, they're on the same level. They're communicating and they're trying to get this club and turn around into a, a winning club and a winning culture. So sometimes you've got to make big decisions. And if they're picking players, and you've got to remember too that, you know, these players, because they're at Canterbury or coming nearly last, they'd be going to the club saying, well, I want this much and be getting offering less at other places. Mm. So it's the opposite of a Jerome Luai situation. So... Um, you know, Jake Avarillo, big off from the Dolphins. They're going to sit there and go, wait up. 
So is he worth this? Like at the moment, they're playing, they're not just trying to win games, but they need to sort of get their salary cap in order. We're seeing tries being scored there and not a fingertip <laughs> laid on a player. It's like, like the 80s. That is, that is just terrible. Terrible. The, uh, there was an interesting scene on Monday when Liam Knight was at South Sydney headquarters and uh, Danny Widler had the story. He got the, he got the shot of him here leaving Souths at nine o'clock on Monday morning. He's hailing, I think it was his manager, in the Land Rover and then we had a camera at the other end waiting for him at the dogs. Like America. And there's Gus opening <laughs> the door for him in Bulldogs colours and Danny walking behind. But in terms of that signing, is that moving forward? A player like Liam Knight, he's had his injury troubles. Well, Liam trains really hard. Well, he's, his he's, injuries are the... Yeah. He's come, coming off a horrendous knee. Mm. You know, that guy dived at his knee from behind. But uh, uh, he's had some dramas um, in his life, Liam, but I, I know for a fact that he's, he's really dedicated to it now and he's on top of a lot of those things. I think he'd be a good influence there, especially on the younger players. Trains hard. He's got his life sorted. He's a very likeable bloke who trains hard. You talk about the, the dog's DNA, mm. they're renowned for that. They're all likeable blokes who liked a good time, but they always trained hard. I remember seeing him when he's coming through at Manly. He's only a baby then. Mm. 18, 19, he would lead everything. Yeah, he used to, like, he was in all the, the, he was in all the pathways teams, always in the New South Wales teams. He was the best, the best front row or back row coming through. It's a good boy. It's a good he's, opportunity for him too. And he's there next year as well, so it's a mm. good lead in to go, hey, get mm. part of the system. Can he play? Then, He's, yeah. He play, yeah, he's playing this week in... Is he? Has he been playing for South? He, he's had a couple of setbacks he's after his knee. Yeah, right. Yeah. But, yeah, let's hope he's injury-free moving forward. All right, NRLW round two uh, kicks off on Thursday night with the Broncos taking on the Titans. Here's Marley Silva and Ruan, Sin, Ruan Sims with this week's preview. Thanks, Zach. Well, Ru, who impressed you from the first weekend of the NRLW? Team or individual? Oh, let's go for... Individual first. All right. Individual, unsurprisingly, someone I've already spoken a lot about was Lasana Lutu. She was incredible. I've never seen somebody completely change the dynamic of a game the way she did when she came on for the Tigers for the weekend. So that uh, that was pretty impressive. Uh, and team-wise, I think obviously it's very hard to go past what the Roosters brought. We knew they were going to be tough. Uh, and then to go up against such a strong Broncos outfit and uh, perform the way they did, I was very impressed. And looking to round two, who needs to improve? Uh, I don't know about improve, but just sort of look at different ways of unlocking their edges. I think the Dragons showed some really great potential. Tegan Berry was amazing out the back. And I know that Jamie Sauer this week will be working on a lot of ways to sort of unlock that uh, potential out wide for them. So I'm looking forward to them having a big week. We're no doubt in for another massive weekend of NRLW. But now it's back to you guys. Yeah, well, round one was a great weekend of footy. Freddie, uh, the Roosters, they Too look good. really, really good. Yeah, a lot of uh, scrutiny on the Roosters, but they stood up. That was the best I reckon. That was the best I've seen them play. Um, uh, Jess was good. It just seemed like everything about their game, although they, they moved the ball at the right times. And I haven't seen Brisbane get beat like that either. Yeah. Brisbane have been the... They haven't won the grand final every year, but they've been the best team pretty much the whole time. And I haven't seen them get beat like that. And Joey, your Knights, mm. too good for the Really Dragons. impressive. Really impressive outside backs and edge forwards. Um, Caitlin Johnson normally plays in the middle. She played on edge. She was, I don't know what she had for dinner the night before, but she was in a mood. She was cracking people. She scored the try. Yep. That was a great try. Yeah, great try. And then uh, Jess Southwell, icing on the cake. But um, they were really good. The nice lost some key players from last year, but I think they'll be thereabouts. The Tigers looked impressive. Yeah, mm. yeah under Very Brett Kamali, not his yeah. coach. They looked really good. Titans, they beat the Cowboys. I didn't see that game. Yeah, Titans beat the Cowboys. I like, uh, I like the movement in the women's game. Obviously, they're all looking for opportunities and securing, securing jobs, and you know they love the game so much. I like the movement. At the moment, I think at some stage it'll all settle down and players will, you know, pick a team and play for a team. Uh, I look forward to that day, but at the moment, just, you know, spotting where they're all going and there's plenty of movement, so it um, makes it interesting. The Dragons fullback, can't think of her first name, uh, Berry. She scored Tegan 100. Berry. Tegan Berry. She scored oh, 100 metre try. She, uh, she, she's the epitome of where the, the NRLW has got to. Now, you know, where you're getting athletes. Now, she ran at 
50 or something for 100 metres, which is just fine. She got, it was like watching, you see Tyrell Sloan run, and it's like poetry, mm. effortless. She was just flat. Hamaso Tabuai Fido. Like, same, same. He, he just glides. Glides. Across. It's not, yeah. it's cruel. Tonegato. Yeah. Yep. Moving from fullback to 5'8", she was outstanding. She was really good. Yep. Really good kicking game too. You can tell she'd been practising. And that's that's the next stage for the women's game is just getting that kicking game right. But a couple of tries off kicks and, yeah, she was really good. Really classy player. Yeah. High standard already set in this season. Of course, all the games you can catch this weekend right here on 9. Uh, the men's action kicks off on Thursday night. It's time to get your thoughts on uh, the games here on 9. We've got the Broncos against the Roosters from uh, 7.30 live and free. So you said earlier... Uh, we spoke about the, where the Roosters are at, where the Broncos are at. If you look at the two teams and line them up next to each other, outside the halfbacks, you can, they nearly match up. I think the, the Broncos bench has got a little bit more impact. But outside that, they are so alike, these teams. Broncos have just been winning for longer. And the halfbacks. And that'll mostly be the difference. Fullback, Bruce Walsh. Tedesco played pretty good last mm, week. Good to see Teddy take that form from yeah. Origin 3 in. Um, well, the I Roosters did, were up for that game from the yeah, start. Like, I just think but they have to go up how many gears? I think they have to the find yeah, another couple of gears. I, I think Broncos went up there. They get Tom Flegler back, Martin Tapau, he's suspended. Jesse Arthur's suspended. But they get players back. And Reese Walsh, the way he comes on the back of those set plays... He's devastating. He seems right like he's off. just that player. That Jared. Everybody loves to play with. Jared v Payne Haas. Yeah, be Jared and Lindsay Collins. Yeah, against Flegler against and Payne, Payne Haas. Yeah. Chucking Pat Carrigan. Carrigan. Jeez, yeah, Victor's, match Victor's moved, been moved back to lock. I think, you got, I think both butchers are playing in the back row, yeah. I yep. think. And there's a uh, baker on the bench. Yeah, Fletcher A baker. butcher and a baker. A mm. <laughs> couple of butchers. Some of your best work, Joey. Uh, Friday you. night footy, we've got the Storm against the Eels. Now, the Eels have been you know, hit Decimate. with suspensions and injuries to key players again. Dylan Brown's still a week away. The Storm are missing some troops as well. This, so is, always, this is a great, great grudge match. Par Parramatta knows Siva, who gets the sets rolling. And no go forward men in Regan Campbell-Gillard. No, no Sean Lane. No, no Sean Lane now. And then no Dylan Brown for another week. But the Storm have got players out. Justin Big Nelson. Nolan, Justin, Nolan, Justin, Justin, Big Nelson, Tarek. And Rima Smith. So, Big Nelson's a huge loss for them. And coming huge off a loss, loss in Newcastle, mm. they will be up the storm, you'd have to think. Well, they very rarely lose two in a row. They've got the very storm. good players in key positions. Like if Harry and Cameron Munster and then Jerome Hughes, if they play good, they can direct the game well enough to win the game. It wouldn't matter who is on the other side. If they play good alone, they nearly steer a victory, so I feel like they must really play good. And Sunday Arvo footy is for the Queenslanders, the Titans against the Cowboys, who you are the unstoppable. Titans. I like the Titans, yeah. Early on you were smelling something. Yeah. What could you smell? Um, an upset. Or Winnie Reds. <laughs> <laughs> the old man just driving car in the Camel. 80s. No filter. I thought you were a vape man, Joey. <laughs> no, none of that stuff. Okay, I, so I think the Cowboys getting beat. I just think with um, Nene out, I know Finu, Fini Fukuaki comes in, who's a devastating. Close. Sorry, mate, I butchered that. Fini Fukuaki. Um, he's a player and a half. He's, he's a, a beast. powerhouse. What's um, he, 19? Is he 19 or 20? Yeah, I think he's still a teenager. Yeah. And what's Nene? Nene. Is oh, he 21? 20, 21. Lukey, 20, 21. 20, Seriously. They're, Got breeding, drink. They're, they're breeding back rollers and forwards for fun up there. We've been throwing a guy, Tal Malolo. On the bench. Well, he's on the bench. Like it's. I was talking to Scott Drinkwater during Origin. I was asking him about Finney. Fuiaki. Fuiaki. And he said he has corked that many players at training. <laughs> <laughs> just elbows, <laughs> yeah. knees. Just, you know, those blokes are just have no idea how powerful they are. Mm. He's a They're player. a good side. I think Neem, Neem's good back. For Neem, he's a good player. Uh, yeah. There's someone else back, I'm pretty sure. All right, that's it. We've got, um, uh, of course, Six Tackles with Gus podcast and Mortal Behaviour with Joey tomorrow. Remind Gus about that phone call. Yeah. And you're the fucking coach. You can fucking make the rules. I'm fucking this. Mate, you can't swear. There's kids They watching. can bip you off, can't you, bip okay. me? Okay. 
bit me. Well, you are a coach. Have you given a spray like that in your time? Not to a player. Well, not what's, a, okay, not what, like that. what's the biggest spray you've given? I don't know. Uh, I don't oh, feel to, like you're to a, teams. I don't feel like you're a coach that gives many. Yes, you, you have to sometimes. To teams, I've given sprays. Um, I don't think I've done that to an individual like he did to me. Oh, it was abuse. He abused me a couple of times. I could sue you. Joey, yes. Words, any words of wisdom? No, uh, not really. Odds on, watch on. Yeah, don't back odds on. Mate, do as you're told. There's a bit of wisdom. Do it responsibly. Yeah. Get out and train hard. Don't worry if you got a niggle or you haven't slept or you haven't drunk two litres of water. <laughs> if you drunk three litres of bourbon, get out and train. Go on. Fireball. <laughs> get some. Get some. Um, what is it? Reflux. And the, and the roosters, because we used to always, we'd get flogged if you got beat sometimes, and the boys would all go out, all the young blokes, and get up and they'd all train their undies like the old school. <laughs> it was hilarious. Right. It was hilarious. We're getting loose here, of course, responsible, drinking, gambling, whatever you do. Yep, for sure. All right. Freddie, thank you. Joey, thanks for having me. And hopefully the great Matt Thompson will be back here next week. Thanks for joining us.